Welcome back, everybody, on this very hot day. Row, row. No. <laughs> I ain't lying. Very hot, tiresome day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Powdered milk was a bad idea. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It is hot today. We're toughing it out. Everybody's going through stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But we're here for you. We're here to brighten your day up. I was going to tell you, so during that storm, um, I was moving my car away from this tree because, man, I didn't know if it was going to stand up or not. But, dude, it was so crazy because I moved it to the street, and, man, the wind was, like, going so crazy. It was, like, this tree back here, our neighbor's tree, was, like, it looked like somebody was just grabbed it and it, it was shaking the tree and i didn't know and i had my phone in here because i thought oh i'll just move my car and run back in here but man that wind was so crazy what they say like 90 mile winds and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i was gonna ask you though when i was in my car and i was about to get out dude it looked like something like the wind was going that way and everything was going that way but it looked like this figure or something this giant figure came running like from the street and it was in line to this tree and that tree was going that way and like whatever hit it man it looked like just like a like a linebacker hit this tree boom and the tree went back this way and it came back towards the house and then it just kind of normaled out and i watched this whole thing and i swear it looked like an outline of something like a like a giant man or or something i don't know and it looked like it it just came running full force across our yard and just smacked right into our tree Damn. and i was like what was that and i didn't have my phone out cuz my phone was in here and i just watched it happen and i was going to get out and i saw that and i was like i'm staying in the house cuz <laughs> i don't know what that was I was going to ask chris what that was well, you know, we d- we've already done an episode on both uh, water monsters and giants. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it comes to those big storms, it's either or. You know, so what you saw is probably what you saw. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes to storms like that, you know, um, those old Indians, not, not only Creeks, but, you know, all tribes used to say, you know, you put an offering outside. And those things will leave your home alone. Mm-hmm. You know, so I know I, I always do that. You know, when there's big major storms, they're telling you that something's coming this way. Mm-hmm. You know, I always give out an offering, you know, tell it, you know, please, you know, go past me. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving you something, you know, that you might, you know, use or need or whatever. You know, and just ask that it leave me alone, you know. And so, again, you know. Old Creeks believe, you know, that you, you do that anyway, you know, because we have what they call Wind Clan. And, you know, uh, I'm also Wind Clan. And so we're big believers in that, you know, and especially when those giants, you know, we, we know when they travel, those major storms and those water monsters, they cause that big storms to come in like that. But the, the difference is the water monsters, they call the rain, the water, mm-hmm. the giants thunder and lightning you know strong winds Mm -hmm. and so you know to me that tells you right there that you saw what you saw you know because what did they say here in Tulsa you had 100 mile an hour winds Mm -hmm. and when I heard that you know I said man I better get out there and you know give them something so they'll pass pass us by you know again I'm not you know I'll just say Sky Tick didn't get hit like you guys did, you know, and I don't know, you know, again, that's old belief, you know, whether you believe it or not, you know, that's what I did, and that's all I can say, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that next time. Yeah, I've heard uh, an old Seminole man tell me, put out a, like a turtle show, just the, you know, like a... You know, when they make those shakers where it still has the bottom attached mm-hmm. to it, like the belly's attached to it. Mm-hmm. And I guess the idea is you try to capture a part of that storm inside that shell. And it's supposed to, like, 
make the storm go over you or split the storm, mm-hmm. so to speak. And I think that was kind of touched on a little bit in Reservation Dogs, in that tornado episode where that guy, Big Brownie's up there on the roof with the axe. And I always got a lot of people asking me, like, why was he doing that? <laughs> like, what does that mean? And I was like, well, it's just kind of like splitting the storm. You know, and, and that's that, for for natural storms, yeah, na- natural storms. But you know, like like you're talking about giants or, or water monsters. You know, again, you know, tobacco is always good with a prayer. You know, also meat because mm-hmm. you got to remember these things they devour things. So you know, just a little bit. You don't have to put out a whole fried bucket of chicken or anything <laughs> like that you know it's just an offering yeah. you know saying hey you know i'm gonna give the gift this to you you know <clears throat> it's the the giving that it it sees that you respecting it yeah and it'll go on same way with those water monsters when you give them that tobacco or that meat you know no fruit everybody always says fruit but you know these are meat eaters you know and, and you know I, i'm sure that they they don't mind fruit, but mm-hmm. I know me, myself, I'm a meat eater, too. You give me a difference between an apple and a steak, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at you different if you give me that <laughs> give me that steak. I say, all right, all right. But, but. I saw some pictures, too, floating around <clears throat> on Facebook. And, of course, in this day and age, you know, it's like there's so much, like, AI and – you know, doctored photos, Photoshop and stuff. But they were there were some couple of pictures of like a face in the clouds that had like looked like his, his like back like this with his mouth open mm. um, as those storms were rolling in. Um, I thought I tagged y'all in that, did I not? I think I saw that. Yeah, well, yeah. I thought I tagged y'all in that. Yeah, I think I've seen it too. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a lot of crazy photos of people taking pictures of the clouds. Yeah, and some of them. <laughs> Like Russell was saying, some of them were shaped like big men, you know. Yeah. And I was real shocked. I thought, dang, those guys better quit taking pictures of those things. But, <laughs> you know, again, you know, I know today's, you know, 2023, and we just get away with everything now. But, you know, again, those things are to be respected. And th- those things are real, you know. And, and like I said, you know, count yourself lucky you got to see it. It was a blessing that you got to see it without it damaging too much around here so yeah i was gonna message you but they that storm lasted till about 2 a.m and i was gonna say chris you never you never like believe what i saw what i saw out here and i don't know <clears throat> but i was like we're gonna record soon so i'll just tell you on the live i guess mm. but yeah it was it was really cool to see that uh i wasn't afraid <laughs> Um, I just didn't know what I was looking at mm-hmm. and I was just kind of like surprised or shocked. I don't know. I wasn't afraid though, but I, I kind of got scared when that tree goes like it, man, it went back like way back. And I was like, Oh God, this is it. <laughs> I was like, hold on, hold on tree. <laughs> You've been through so much over the years. Hold on. And dude, like, ah, I was like, man, I wish I would have recorded that, but Maybe it wasn't meant to be recorded, like you were saying, you know, and yeah. Um, just, yeah. So what do you suggest I do? Like I said, you can always leave out an offering for them, okay. you know, and, you know, like I said, just it don't have to be a lot, just a little, you know, just a little bit, you know, and and just, you know, say your piece, you know, you, you mean no disrespect, you know, and just leave it out there, you know, and. that'll be good enough you know again you know those old ways you know they're dying Mm -hmm. and you know i keep hearing you know people on on social media and in different uh i don't know how you say like tv and stuff they're talking about you know going back to those old ways you know those old ways were tough you know and they were strict you know and but yet you know, we all had duties to do. You know, these ceremonies that we're losing. You know, I keep hearing people saying, well, you know, we're not doing this ceremony anymore because of this or that, you know. And and because of it being the, the time it is, you know, they kind of say, well, we don't really need to do it anymore. But then you have those effects, you know, just like... 
this wild storm that just came out of nowhere. You know, these things are letting us know they're still around, whether we want to believe them or not. You know, and so to me, I mean, again, you know, I, I might be crazy, but, you know, I always always do those kind of things. You know, whether I go across the water or I go near a water, I always give offerings. You know, same way with the woods. I'm getting ready to go on a hike or even on a trail sometimes. You know, I'll always put, you know, an offering out. And just tell whatever's in down this, you know, trail that, you know, I don't mean disrespect. I'm just either exercising or I have to go through here. And so, you know, I don't you know, I'm giving it an offering, letting them know that I respect it, you know, and I ask that it let me go in peace, you know, whatever it is out there, you know, so that's something I do, you know, and I know I got a few uh, friends that do that too, you know, they're, they're always talking about that too, you know, and and one of them's a Pawnee, you know, Pawnee guy, you know, and uh, I call him my brother, my Pawnee brother, David Echohawk, you know, and, you know, he talks about those things too down there in Pawnee, you know, and, and so uh, storms, you know, are, you know, definitely... Uh, how you say that's a native you know that we, we always respected the weather you know and, and sometimes these storms are what tells us when ceremonies need to be done you know some of them won't dance until the first lightning or the first thunder you know they say you know and some some won't do ceremony till the first rain you know and some won't do ceremonies till the first snow you know the elements we used to listen to, but we don't do that anymore. Yeah. The water pod has helped me be more aware, stuff like that, too. And so I try to be, well, I am respectful to everything we do. Like, you know, even investigations, we go on investigations and, hey, we can talk about that, too. I forgot, I forgot we released that Ben Johnson one, that ghost investigation in Pahuska. And, uh, but, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to lay some out for it. I need to go get some tobacco though. Mm. Marlboro. God, they only like camels. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah. Newports. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm> cool. <laughs> Those Camel mid- crush. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they could have a choice. Dang. <laughs> so, so they always want that, uh, what do they call it? Um, CBD? No. <laughs> that arthritis. God, that giant might be getting old like that, boy. Rubbing it on his joints. God, <laughs> that cream. <laughs> <laughs> so that old water monster can't get up like that no more. He needs that. No. <laughs> us all up (laughs) 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 oh you're making me sweat now (laughs) (laughs) it's already Uh, hot man i know yeah making me laugh and shit My my AC is barely going, guys. <laughs> Gotta give it some CBD, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Rub it on that thermostat. <laughs> Please like get that. cooler. <laughs> you like it like that? Is that the spot? <laughs> circles, <laughs> small circles. <laughs> Rub that CBD pain cream in. <laughs> <laughs> Your thermostat. Like, ah. It just goes lower. Yeah, <laughs> it starts working. <laughs> <laughs> Start spitting out frost. <laughs> Starts making ice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> Any trusted AC? 
company will tell you the same. <laughs> you know the secrets to fixing your AC. <laughs> oh, man. Some that old ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try it. No, I'm just kidding. I'll be right back. <laughs> See if it works. <laughs> Oh man! (laughs) 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 Oh man! I'm really sweating, guys. I'm really sweating, fans. Oh man! I should have used that in Vegas a bit. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you must have got blessed somehow because didn't you leave out of there with like two hundred twelve dollars up? Oh yeah, yeah. So you did get a little blessing. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah so I went to Vegas over the weekend for this big native night of entertainment and got sick on the plane motion sickness and got there was pretty tired i walked the strip it was a very it's a very tiresome weekend and i'm not used to walking a lot and cramped up cramped all night woke up and i was like okay let's do it so i was getting my mind ready and did the show it was a great show Snotty Nose Res Kids was there, Natani Means, Casey Nicholson, DJ Big Rez. I mean, just all these like amazing people were there performing and doing what they do. <clears throat> and I hosted the show. So it was that was really cool and to network and to meet new people and just contact them and tell them what I do and stuff. And and so we got to the airport and we were about to board the plane like they, our group they're about to call our group and i saw some sheen and i had like 20 bucks left on me and i was like you know what i was like it's 20 bucks so i might as well just see what happens it was a dollar machine <clears throat> and max bet was three dollars i'm gonna see what happens you know so and we're about to board and i put my 20 in and i was gonna bet two and i accidentally hit hit it three times and it wouldn't <laughs> let me go back down <laughs> And I was like, dang, I should just cash out. But I was like, maybe this is a sign. Yeah. Maybe. And so I kept it on $3, and I was just, I was, it was max bet, so I was betting it. And I got down to about $9, and I hit it again. It was like, it was two fire sevens and one regular seven. Like, it all hit, and it lit up, and it started, like, blinking. <clears throat> And this ringing sound started happening. And everybody's looking at me. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. And I looked back at Zebediah and Kenny. And they're just cracking up. And I was like, of course, right? As we're boarding, I, I hit something. And it wasn't like, you know, a bad thing. But it was always it's always like when you're in a rush mm-hmm. or like <clears throat> you just really don't fully expect it, something like that to happen. And... I won it, and I was like, "Oh shoot, car payment!" So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but before that, I was even thinking, like, "Man, watch me, watch me hit something cool, like you know, real nice, or hit a jackpot." You yeah. know, if I hit a jackpot, I don't know what their um, payout system's like, but I don't know if they do it by hand because I know here, you, it, when you hit a jackpot, it's like you have to show your forms of ID, and then you have to get taxes taken out and stuff, and mm. all that paperwork that goes along with it. So. I was like, well, I was like, if I had a jackpot, then I guess I'll just <laughs> buy my own plane ticket home. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but that was really cool. And went to Austin, and we got back around 11 here, p.m., and then I woke up that next day and went to the conference to work. So, But it was cool, man. I enjoyed it. I didn't see no aliens. Chris mm-hmm. asked me that earlier. I was like, no. I was like, well, I just walked none, around. None that you know of. I went to In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> <laughs> Bound to see an alien or two there, <laughs> yeah. probably behind the counter. <laughs> we were—I was looking around in the sky, but it was so bright, you know, like because we were right there in the strip. They had like spotlights everywhere, and I mean, you couldn't—I mean, you see the planes, but beyond like the planes and stuff, you really couldn't see anything. So, I thought 
I was thinking like, dang, and during the whole event, I was like, dang, that Independence Independence Day alien come, no. hover over the Palm Springs <laughs> as we're partying. Mars attacks. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you see that one uh, video? Uh, somebody uh, shared about Las Vegas. There was mm-hmm. uh, a club or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, and they went out and everybody was looking at it, and there was a like a triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that. I shared that <clears> video because we talked about. It. Oh, that's when we. Was that Star People we talked about? And then I showed that video, I think. But you sent that to us, and then I found the actual like long version of it. But I remember that video, and then like the UFO craze that happened weeks, like a couple of weeks before I went to Vegas. Remember that? Is that the family? One, yeah, that, the one I sent you about the family that said the one crashed in their yeah yard, in their backyard, and there was like a nine foot nine foot alien, uh, and the police were called, and then like mm-hmm. the guy captured it, something like on his body cam Mm -hmm. i mean you can't really see much but yeah you did see like the dash cam footage of the object though like you know it was like a big green ball in Mm -hmm. the sky and you could see it like streaking and it you know goes over the horizon line so whatever it did it did go like crash like it looked like it crashed Mm -hmm. and then there was like that family that called 911 and they checked it out and he's the cop was like well like i don't normally go on calls like this but like you're not the first person that's called. We've had several people call. And so he's like, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> and he's like, I don't want to go in that backyard. Yeah. You know? But they're all like, come back over here. Like, but that was in Vegas, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Or was that? Yeah. Yeah. That's probably like the outskirts of Vegas. I didn't know Vegas was so big. I never been there before. And like, we're on top of the palms and dude, like that place is so freaking huge. And I was talking to, I think Jordan and Zebediah, and I was like, man, I was like, have you guys seen like aliens or like, I mean, like UFOs or anything? They're like, no. Um, but we saw that video before we came out here. So they said like they were looking in the sky and stuff. And I was like, man, I bet it happened like, you know, way out there because there's houses way, way the heck out there. And I was like, I bet it happened like somewhere out there because, I mean, I don't think anything's going to happen around here. But and I was like, man, I wish I can. I, I wish I can go look around at least like explore the entire las vegas area but i mean i just had to stay in that one area and because i had to be there for the event and other stuff too but where's area 51 in conjunction of vegas because isn't it in nevada as well isn't it isn't that in roswell <coughs> area 51 mm-hmm. is it in roswell new mexico i thought it was hold on i don't know oh i asked I know they do have uh, something that's close to there because everybody's always got stories. Yeah, of seeing aliens around Las Vegas. You might be right. I don't know why I was thinking <coughs> Vegas or Nevada. I thought it was in the Nevada desert, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me see. Area okay, what well, says Nevada? Yeah, I thought it was in Nevada. Did you say Nevada? Nevada. 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 Is Nevada. it Nevada? I was yeah. saying Nevada. Nevada. Ain't fancy. Whatever Nevada. I said. Nevada. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, e- either way, I knew what you was talking Seth, about. Seth, so. that one that looks like a piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> like a thick stuffed crust piece of pizza. I knew what you was talking about, so. Thank you. <clears throat> Listeners, is it Nevada or Nevada? <laughs> what did I say? You said Nevada. I said Nevada. I don't know what it is. Well, you're smarter than me, so. No, I'm not. I'll go. <laughs> I have an art degree. I don't make me smarter than nobody at this table. Tyler, you're a teacher. Don't say you're not smart. <laughs> it says Nevada. That's all it says, though. It doesn't say, like, the exact. Where, yeah. Probably on purpose. Yeah. I thought it was in Roswell, though. What the heck's in Roswell, New Mexico? Because that's the a alien whole... crash. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, yeah. that was the same thing. No. The alien. no yeah, that's two different things. Yeah. Ew. Okay. But I think, didn't they take those bodies to Area 51? I don't know. I remember seeing, like, back in the day when you could go to the video store and rent the coolest movies. Mm -hmm. And they had one, like, a series. I think I talked about it on this show. Um, It was called, like, Mysteries of the Unknown or something like that. Or Unknown. Was ah, something like that. Or Secret, (coughs) Secret, whatever it was. Anyway. Um, they did one and they had the actual like autopsy footage, the alien autopsy footage. Mm-hmm. And man, I, I bought that hook, line and sinker. Cause I thought that was real. Cause it, whoever did that film, man, 
I mean, it is good. Like, I haven't seen it in a while, so I'm sure it's a hokey now. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, when you're watching that thing, I mean, you get, give me the heebie-jeebies because, I mean, they're peeling, like, skin off of flat. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, if they faked that, I mean, they did a good job. Uh, I don't know. It was... Have you ever seen that? Yeah. The original? <clears throat> my, it's like an uh, hour long. My mom and grandma uh, rated that one time. Is that TSA and Pawnee? And they had all kind of crazy stuff in that video store, but they rented it. And I just remember it was documentary style, so they were just kind of yeah. all around the, yeah. the operating table. Like it was the alien was on the table, and they were just kind of going all the way around it, and all the doctors were cutting into it. Yeah. And yeah, they were like going inside and getting the organs out, and yeah. it played this creepy music yeah. as like the entire thing played. And I don't think I don't know. I got creeped out. Me I too. Like, I can't watch this. <laughs> like I'm only seven, eight. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't watch it. And I went in my room, and I just thought about that the entire time. Just like, oh my gosh, like the, the alien is getting autopsied oh <laughs> and they're around here somewhere yeah like, we don't know where they're at but yeah yeah have you seen that mm. you never mm. seen the original alien autopsy <clears throat> no i don't think so oh man if it's i find worth... the clip i'll put it on here it's got to be out there on youtube right they probably looks all cheesy yeah i haven't seen it since <laughs> i rented it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't think i ever owned it because it's creeped me out too much but like i said man like whoever did that like i don't even know if anybody's ever come out and said like ah, oh, it was me. But I don't think so either. I don't know. Has it? I mean, it's has it even been debunked? I don't know. That's something to look I th- into. I think about it every now and again, but I just don't go in and like Google it. Like, is it is is it called what's it called? Alien autopsy. Is that alien it? autopsy footage? Yeah. Ninety five, right? Uh, oh, it said Ray Roswell alien autopsy. Was it? Did it come out in ninety five? I, I think because I'd have been in college if that was if that's the case. I want to say yeah, it's the '90s because I was still a kid, and I just uh, I, very, mean, I, I was very afraid. Maybe that sounds about right because I mean, I mean, I was a kid too. I mean, I feel like I was in like middle school or junior high, like tenth or not ninth or tenth grade, but I could be wrong. That one. Yeah, that's it. Factor Fiction. That's the one that mm. came out in '95. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to do an episode on the alien autopsy. <clears throat> I bet if I watched it, I'd probably refresh my memory. It's stuff. just black and white. I don't think it had any sound. There's no sound to it. It had like, weird music. I remember that in some yeah. parts. But. There's like a little setup at the beginning of it to talk about, give you the history of Roswell, the Roswell crash. Mm. And then like yeah, they talk about like where they took the bodies and where this footage was supposedly captured. And how it was unearthed, I don't remember. It was a long time. Like I said, I saw it like once, I think. Maybe twice. Maybe I rented it Maybe on the weekends. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? I watch it every night. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I watch it three times a week. Fact or fiction. It's on YouTube to rent. So. Oh, you can rent it? Oh, I bet. I wonder if it's on uh, Prime. Because let me tell you something. There are some good movies on Prime. Let's see. Alien Autopsy. Oh, shoot. It's actually free on YouTube. Oh, it is free? Just type in Alien Autopsy Fact or Fiction, and it's free on there. So, um, yeah, Chris, here's what. I'll probably post this on there, too, but here's basically what it looked like. Dang. Well, there's several videos on. It's not that one. But there's several on Prime dealing with that. Alien Autopsy, Fact or Fiction, 1995. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Tell me that does not look legit. It still looks legit now. It does. Yeah. Let's turn it off. Yeah, because we'll be watching a silent film. We're going to do a <laughs> an audio commentary on Alien Autopsy. Dang. But no, nah, check it out because it's cool. It's a good one. This one's from Kerry Thomas Cody from Oklahoma City. You guys might know him. He's got, he does a lot of the short films. Skull Crawlers. Skull Crawlers, that's what they're called. 
Anyway, let me see if I can get this thing to work. What's up, Spirit Talkers? Long time fan. Since you guys started the pod way back when you guys were uh, Unsolved Reservation Mysteries. Take that out. Uh, <laughs> Carrie Thomas Cody here. I am one part of the Skullcrawlers Movie Club. And I got a, yeah, an alien story to tell you guys. Um, so this must have been back in 2020. Sarah and I, my wife and I, had just moved from our rent house to the new house that we're staying at now. And <clears throat> this is back when I was peak UFO influenced. I wanted to know everything about UFOs, aliens, all that stuff. Um, I still do. But back then, I, everything I was watching, everything I was consuming was just alien, UFO, secrets of Skinwalker Ranch, all that stuff. Fascinated by it. Um, I think I've got a pretty good grasp on my theories of what UFOs are, what aliens are, um, how they tie into shadow people, and the different dimensions and whatnot. Um, but something strange definitely happened around that time. And of course it could have just been a dream, it could have been a nightmare, whatever you want to call it. But wife and I watched this movie called Dark Skies. And it has Kerry Russell in it, and uh, I think it was back in 2014 is when it came out. And we just saw it streaming on Netflix at some point. And so we watched it, and because I think the thumbnail looked pretty spooky, um, and it's horrifying. It's about this, uh, this family, this suburb family, and they go hiking to the Grand Canyon, and they stumble upon this cave that has, this, has some ruins in it, and some Native American artifacts from out there. And some kid steals this stone out of the cave and then cut forward to like a year later or something like that. And um, a bunch of strange stuff starts happening. Shadow people are uh, showing up in their dreams and people are randomly getting abducted, kids going missing, all that stuff. It's a horrifying movie. Um, we finished the movie and I was completely blown away. Because like this is exactly what I feel like the greys are, um, shadow people, all of this stuff, and I was blown away. I thought it was, I thought it was just like the perfect depiction of in my head of what aliens are, what UFOs are, um, what alien abductions are like. And soon after that, I had this horrifying dream, if you want to call it. But I, I have, I've had sleep paralysis for the past. 15 years. Um, I only get it maybe once a year, once every other year. It's been a while since I've had it. And one night, I, I fall asleep with my wife. She's in the same bed as me. We don't have a kid yet. And I wake up in the middle of the night. And, uh, sorry, let me go back. Actually, I remember dreaming. And what I was dreaming was that I was hiking on a mountain with some friends at night. Um, I think it was probably Mount Scott. And there's a road on that on that mountain, and so we're standing on the road before we're hiking some more, and I see a light coming up from the trees. And I don't know why I said this, but the first thing I said was, they're coming for me. I know too much. So uh, I remember like trying to run away, and then the UFO kept coming higher and higher, and I could see the light beaming on me, and I wake up in my bed. And I'm frozen. I have sleep paralysis. But from the outside window of me and my wife's bedroom, I see the light coming through our window. And I can't move. I'm horrified. I <clears throat> and I remember laying there and I think I say, They're coming for me. They're coming for me. And then I hear the front door open. Then I hear footsteps all through the house and I hear him coming down the hall for me and I could barely turn my head like this to see out the, from the bed, see out the door down the hallway and I see one of the greys coming into our room and then jumping on top of me and he starts strangling me and then I fell asleep. I don't know what happened after that. It was, it was horrifying 
Um, and then I woke up and I remembered what happened. I was like, that was very strange. But I've done a lot of research on alien abduction since then. And a lot of them are very similar to what I felt like I experienced is that it was more of like a sleep paralysis type situation. They came at night and I, 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 I never left my bed. My wife would have noticed if I was gone. The front door didn't open or my dog would have barked her head off. So it wasn't like a home intruder or anything like that. Um, I don't know what happened. I'm, I haven't really told many people that I was, I feel like I was abducted. I told my dad recently and he was like, huh, interesting. Um, Cause it makes me sound like a crazy person. And of course that's what everybody says. But a lot of sleep or a lot of alien abduction stories they are abducted out of their homes. They never even leave their bed. It's just their their spirit or their body disappears, from, or their spirit disappears from their body, um, and then they have this outer body experience. If that makes sense. Anyway, guys, that's my story. Uh, love the show. Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, you guys need to come on my podcast, Suspend Disbelief, where we tell scary stories. Um, love the pod. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, sure appreciate that. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so good, we're gonna listen to it again. <laughs> so nice, Encore. let's hear it twice. Encore. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting that he said that. You know, like um, it's not when you think of like an abduction. It's not like what is kind of depicted in the movies or in like science fiction. Mm-hmm. That it's more like a spiritual thing versus like an actual physical abduction and i'm sure it can go both ways because i've heard stories where like people disappear and then like the, there's like what they feel like is a very long time passes and then they're dropped back like 15 mm-hmm. minutes later but yeah. they're like in some other place you know where it's like physically impossible to move that kind of distance in that amount of time um so it's it, i that's a really cool story it's interesting that he said that it's more of like a spiritual thing versus like a physical thing mm-hmm. so yeah well uh thank you Tom, uh carrie thomas cody for that yeah Mado. everybody go check out suspend suspend belief i believe on spotify and youtube mm-hmm. i don't think they're on apple podcast because it's it's mainly like video so mm-hmm. spotify allows video podcasts to share their stuff and everything too but shout out to you man and we're down to come on your show and get creepy Creep it real. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> I got another story from. How would you say that last name? H. Uh, Hain- uh, looks like uh, Hainta. Hainta. I think. Or Hainta. Hainta. Mr. Anthony. Uh, Hainta. 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 Send us a story. Hainta. And I'm going to have uh, Tyler read this because I know he's got good eyes. If we're wrong in your last name, please correct us. Yeah, let us us. know. Sorry about that. Yeah. This says, uh, my experience was with a UFO here in Anadarko. I grew up in the country in Carnegie Daw. I'd always pee outside. (laughs) Sorry, I just had my son does the same thing. Uh, I was outside peeing here in Darko one night. When When I go, I always look to the stars. Well, this night, the stars started disappearing. I kept watching and noticed the shape was triangular. It looked like it had just was just floating across the sky slowly. I thought that this could not be a UFO because there was no blinking lights or any lights at all. And then I thought of that scene in Close Encounters of the Third Kind when that UFO shined the lights on the ground, then went dark and floated to the next intersection. And I ran in and told my old lady, and I was real freaking out. Real Apache woman. Ah, bull, you're just drunk. (laughs) He says, I know. That sounds exactly right. Uh, I know what I saw, but thanks for listening to my story. Uh, And this is the greatest thing ever. He says, hashtag primal rage. (laughs) Again, I want to say a ho to our Kiowa brothers down there in Carnegie and Anadarko. You guys are bringing the the juice tonight. That was good. Yeah, thank you for your story. And then again, if we uh, if we didn't say your last name right, please correct us because yeah. we want to make sure we get that right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, primal rage hasn't been brought up in a while. 
<laughs> well, it's kind of funny that he mentions that too because like I, I kind of giggled at myself because I kind of do the same thing, especially like when you're out. Like, it's just kind of weird, like how one thing that you do will kind of jog your memory and kind of take you down like a old memory lane, I guess. But more out down like down near the ceremonial grounds, and you got to go to the bathroom. This is like out in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? There's like nothing around. There's just it's just pitch black out there you know only light you see is the moonlight and the stars Mm -hmm. and because you're so far out from the city and like just in the country or just like on just you know barren land i guess um you you can see so much more of the sky and i think i told y'all before like you know you stand almost right underneath the milky way you know you can see that the milky way out there and um because the stars are so visible out there like it's just it's a whole different experience like when you just you know go outside and look up because there's so many lights you can't see as much but out there like it just i mean there's just thousands of stars in the sky millions of stars in the sky and you can see them and um it brings me back to like thinking about when i was a kid and we would do the same thing my cousins and i and my brother he had uh, his dad had an old pickup truck you know and we'd lay the bed of the truck down at night and we'd go out there in the summertime and we'd look up with binoculars in this at the stars just looking for ufos <laughs> and you know and i was just remember as a kid you know just being scared to death like what if we saw one mm-hmm. you know what if we saw one? <laughs> but i just remember just hanging out you know that's just what you did as kids back then just hanging out in the bed of the truck in the driveway you know just with binoculars looking at the sky looking for stuff you know, we didn't have TikTok or YouTube. <laughs> we had to make our own fun, and that's what we did. You know what I mean? But yeah, but again, I can just remember like this how the sky was so different, even you know, as a kid as it is now, because it just wasn't as much, you know, around, mm-hmm. you know, as much. But anyway, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But the, the powdered milk, Milky Way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <the> <laughs> We might have to tell that story. Chris, yeah. Chris sent me on a snipe hunt for a movie, and we've come to find out it was not even the right title. I was going down a rabbit hole. I was like, "Dang, what's this movie he's talking about?" I gave you the ending title of it. That's what it was, man. No, he sent me on a snipe hunt. That's fun. I was like, "Man, I'm just gonna watch this movie." I guess. Milk. <laughs> hey, go watch that movie called Milk. <laughs> Tell me what you think about it. When he brought that up, I was like, what movie is that? <laughs> I was like, looking, I was like what is he talking about? I didn't look for it, though, but I figured you would. <laughs> oh, I did. I was like 45 minutes like going through Internet Movie Database. Like, man, there's like a bunch of shorts called Milk. I was reading the descriptions of every single one of them. I'm like, man, that's not that had nothing to do with aliens. I don't have anybody supernatural powers. <laughs> I was like, here's one about Harvey Milk, and here's one called Milk Maid, and here's one called Milk Money. And well, well, for you guys that don't know, you know, <laughs> some it, of us we get milk in the powder <laughs> from commodities. So. so they like come over here tonight, and I go, <sighs> man, I spent like an hour looking for that movie, that milk movie. He's like, oh, you ain't seen that movie? It's about this kid that gets struck by lightning. Man, as soon as he said that, I said, that's called powder. <laughs> And it gets all these abilities. <laughs> Here I am on the internet, man, looking for milk. My internet and movie database search is like all milk, all milk-related movies. I almost put it up on like this movie sh- group that I'm in. Like, y'all ever seen this movie, Milk, about aliens <laughs> or supernatural powers? <laughs> and then he tells me, oh, it's called powder. <laughs> it's like powdered milk, the old res version. Yeah. Making powwow miracles. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a head singer. Rolls up in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> the shades on. <laughs> oh man, you guys are killing me. Case where I jump <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> That's the movie he was talking oh about, Tyler. Oh my god! You know what? We need to make that movie. Powdered milk. <laughs> Powdered milk. <laughs> Performing miracles at the powwow. Oh 
Oh man. Dang it. <clears throat> I got a, I got a, another story. <clears throat> <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to call you out like that, uh, but you guys are killing me over here. <laughs> Dang, we had to let the listeners know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a funny outcome of what happened. <laughs> Dang, those guys know me. No. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> this story is from uh, Walena Fields Weetone and. Uh, she uh, sent this in. She's uh, Osage Creek and something else. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, she's well known in Indian country. But she wanted to share her story. So again, hopefully I can get this thing to work right. Hello. Hey, Chris. I thought this would be better sent via, um, I guess, an actual message um, telling the story. Well, I was living in Harmony. This was probably, it was right before I met Warren, so 2014. And um, I was living at my, uh, I had taken over my grandparents' house in Harmony. And it was, um, it was kind of early in the morning. My mom had came over. I can't remember for what reason, but she had come over and woke me up. And so I let her in. I do remember being kind of jolted out of sleep, probably because of her knocks and everything, but my immediate memory when I woke up, and then also, because I expressed this to my mother, because I had answered the door, um, it was like this memory of a very strong dream, but the... And I've never experienced this really um, in a dream where I woke up and I smelt a smell. And so the first thing when I woke up, you know, even before I realized like there was knocking going on and I answered the door is I smelt a smell. And you know the smell of when there's lots of dead bugs around or like crickets? Mm. That was the smell. That's the closest thing I can come to thinking of what it smelled like. But then I remembered as soon as, you know, I had that smell memory, then I could see, but I also felt. I don't actually remember touching this, but I remembered what it felt like. It was almost like a... I mean, the best way to describe it was like a gray or white alien head, like looking over me as if I was laying on a table. And I guess I felt its head because I remember what that head felt like. This kind of just bald, round, slimy. And then, you know, I guess it was so close to my face that I could smell it. Mm -hmm. And that is all I remember about the dream. But it was so vivid. I've never had anything else like it, another dream like that. And just so out of nowhere that I honestly had to question if I, you know, had, was I abducted? Was that a dream? I have no idea and I still don't know to this day. And I'm almost afraid to wonder if I really was abducted. I know my brother has some stories of him being younger. And um, I always wonder of some visitors. And we have talked about it before, but I've always wondered if um, he had um, has been abducted as well. And then maybe it's just me watching too many of these, you know, alien stories all the time on TV. But, you know, I know it, I feel like they kind of stay in a family. So I kind of had wondered if, you know, same thing is going on with me. I had always kind of have wondered that um, as well, though. But, you know, don't know if it's a dream or if, if it really happened. But it was so vivid. 
of a smell and a memory that it almost wasn't dreamlike. You know, you can remember a lot in a dream, or I usually can, and that was the only things I remember. And it just jolted me out of sleep. Um, yeah, so, you know, take, take it as you want, or, you know, I don't know if I'll ever know, but, so that's my story. Okay. <clears throat> A <laughs> ho and my dough for that story. Mm -hmm. So that's the second one mm -hmm. about a dream, a very vivid dream that felt like an abduction. When huh. I moved, when I moved out to New Mexico, they said like because I had dreams of aliens when I moved out there, and I never even thought about aliens or anything. Because as a kid, yeah, I thought about it a lot. I was afraid of them, and I just. Like you were talking about in the country and stuff, like you see the actual sky and I'd always look out the car window and just like wanting to see one fly by or something. But at like you, I was like, man, if that ever happened, like what, what would happen? You know, like what, how would it come down here and just pull us up and take us away or something? And I was terrified, but, and then that was a kid though. And I just never really I don't know. I just kind of grew out of them, I guess. And when I moved into Mexico, though, like the first week, two weeks I was there, I was having these crazy dreams about aliens and and they were just chasing me. Really, I was running away from them and I think I was fighting them and everything. And but every time I dream about them and like they would get stronger and stronger. And it was like they were they knew like my moves, like my next moves and everything. But and then I told my I told this guy at I I and. Uh, He's like, dang, he's like, he's like, uh, one day, one, when you dream about him like that and just randomly, like you don't, cause I, you don't watch alien films or anything. I said, no, I haven't like thought about him in years, like years, long time when I was a kid. And he said, man, <clears throat> he's like, whoa, he's like, they say like when you dream about him and stuff, they've, they're visiting you or they're abducting you mm. because you're new here. You're not from here and they know you're not from here and stuff. And <clears throat> I was, I was freaked out then. I was like, man, I was like, for real. And he said, yeah, he said, uh, and I was like, well, what do I do? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, don't go to sleep. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, Never sleep there. I won't go. I'll just fail out of college. <laughs> Got like coffee. The grounds. <laughs> coffee. Injecting that coffee. That's in me. right. Jeez, man. But I mean, going back to like Thomas's story, uh, Carrie, Carrie's story. I think I sent this video to you, Chris, but I tried to look for it when, um, you were, we were talking about other stuff, but I was trying to look for this video on TikTok and I can't find it now, but I might've sent it to you. I can't remember. It was maybe a month ago, but there was this lady and she was talking about how she set this camera up in her room because she was having like weird feelings in her sleep and she couldn't, describe how it was and so she set this camera up and i don't know if it's real i don't know if it's fake but it looks pretty legit but all of a sudden it's probably like 3 3 a.m and the camera's on her and this light comes in her room like through her uh curtains and it's like you could just see this huge bright light and then all of a sudden like it kind of turns a certain way and that camera's on her and you just see her like glitch out and it, and she disappears and her blankets just go flat. What? And then it fast forwards like 15, 20 minutes later. And then she's all of a sudden like the blanket puffs up and she's there. No. Yeah. I don't know if I said that to you, Chris, and I was trying to find it, but I can't find it. But I watched that video and I was trying to like sit there and be like, is that, I don't know if that's real or I know that's such a hard thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you could. I mean, I'm sure you could do it, but yeah, this lady was like, you know, she's not really tech friendly, and she just set her camera up because she was having like weird dreams and weird, you know, her sleeps are real crazy and stuff. So that's that's what she had, and yeah. that's what she posted. And man, there are like millions of views on it and stuff, and I can't find it now. I was trying to find it, but disappeared. Yeah, disappeared. <laughs> it's gone. But. I was thinking about that when uh, Carrie's telling us that 
telling us that story. Yeah. Said, hey, he might have been, you know. Yeah. Might have gone up with powdered milk. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hear like, uh, I've heard like too, like if you get abducted, like, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know. I've just read stuff and I've watched stuff, but some people like have like sicknesses that yeah they get rid of after they've been abducted. And I've read that too, where um, this guy had, I guess he had cancer or something. And he said like, he swears up and down that he got abducted because he had it one day. The next day it was just completely gone. He had nothing wrong with him. He was healthy as it can be. And he just claims that he got abducted and they took it out of him. Whoa. So. That's crazy. I don't know. I have no idea. I thought I had a story, but I don't. Yeah. I do have a story, but it's not related to aliens, really. Yeah. Oh, I do have an update, though. Remember that story I I told on the last one about the LP? Yes. So I asked that guy... And I said, hey, man, um, did you, what'd you do after that? You know, because he, he really didn't go in a lot of detail, but he said, I left a plant there. It looked like a cattail, like you would find by water, but it was far from the creek right in the middle of the trail. It stood out because that trail looked well-traveled and nothing growing on that trail. And he said, I didn't know at the time what to do with it because I was just a kid. But now I know if I took it, it might have helped out with some medicine for my grandmother. Mm. So that's all he said. Mm. I got a short one from Charlene. And that's all she wants to be known by. And she was kind of scared to kind of tell too much, you know, because she's had some things. But this is what she ended up saying I could say. So she has... Strange things have happened to her since she was about four years old. She has memories of seeing ETs, seeing strange lights. I have two memories of of beings put in my bed. No memories of what happened, though. My first encounter was when I was 13. That was a very strange encounter. That's kind of... She had other stuff that went on. She didn't want to say too much. Mm. I'm going to have Tyler read this one. This one's from Carlos. And uh, I'll let him read that one. Yeah, Carlos. Let's see. It says, I was probably around 17 when I saw my first UFO. I used to live in Puerto Rico back then. Um, we We were close to the rainforest. One night I was outside talking with some friends facing towards the rainforest when all of a sudden a big green ball of light rose up to probably a half a mile in the sky and then sped away at incredibly fast speed. Another one of my buddies saw the exact same thing, which was great because I had just lost my mind. Around five to seven minutes after that, we saw a couple of helicopters with big spotlights light up the area where the UFO had risen from, and it scared the crap out of us. I lived there for about eight years, and every time we were in that area, I would constantly be looking toward the rainforest mountains. Whoa, that's cool. I've always wondered about that too. You know how much like untouched, like untouched desert um, there is in the world, or how untouched rainforest there are. Like if there's, you know, things that I must hide in those areas. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I guess that'd be a good word for it. But I don't know. That's interesting. I'm sure there is. I mean, I was also reading like, or I listened to this other podcast and there's these people that think that there's still a a giant like anaconda, mm-hmm. but it's in the Congo area. Mm-hmm. And that's the only habitat where it could possibly hide and survive, survive and keep going. And they say it's like 40 feet long. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. And so... I listened to that. I was like, whoa, you know, because like we don't even know. Yeah. I mean, there's so much of this world. Like we don't even know what's even out there. That's what I always said about the ocean. The ocean I've, I've heard stories yeah. of UFOs not coming from space, but coming from the center of the earth or the hollow earth or whatever mm-hmm. through the oceans, you know, that that's where they originate from. So I don't know. I have another listener story. 
And again, she doesn't want to, uh, uh, she wants to be, what do you call it? Anonymous. 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 Jinx. Oh, so. <laughs> Powdered. God. Oh, I'll be coming up with my own words. Boy. These guys don't know. They don't know me. No, I'm just That's the new term for it, powdered. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play this one, and you guys. Hello. Um, I'm going to keep my name anonymous just for this submission. Um, stories about star ancestors and extraterrestrials for me get pretty personal and sometimes can bring up um, emotions and things or trigger me. Um, I've had a lot of <clears throat> encounters and uh, some of them are definitely like when I'm completely awake. And then I've also had them come in forms where they present themselves as a dream, but they happen like in my house, in my bedroom, just things exactly as they are, you know, even the same time on the clock. Um, so it comes in different forms, and um, I've also seen different types of species of star ancestors, too. Um, they definitely can look different and feel different. Uh, the story I'm going to share, um, this is actually one of the more mild stories. So uh, the evening that this happened, I was gathered with some of my girlfriends and our daughters that uh, that evening, and we had a fire, and we were singing songs and making rattles, and it was just a beautiful evening, and I'm just someone who tends to look at the stars. I'm a stargazer. I'm always kind of just paying attention to what's going on in the sky, and I noticed... Um, something that seemed out of the ordinary at first I thought it was a star but then it was moving the way it was moving was strange and it wasn't a satellite those are really easy to spot and when I fixed my gaze on it it just stopped and then it shot off in a totally different direction and I asked the people around me how did you see that did you see that and nobody had noticed um and then that evening I went to bed and my daughter was really little at the time. She was probably under a year still, and we were still co-sleeping. And so I go to bed, and um, I have one arm wrapped around her, and I haven't fallen asleep yet. And I have my other hand on my heart, and I'm laying there. And then I feel this energy come up from underneath me, and the room's totally dark. I can't see anything. And it wraps around my body, so I feel pressure around where my hand is, around my chest and my upper body, as if I'm being hugged from underneath. Again, I can't see anything. It's not saying anything. Um, I know that I'm not paralyzed. I can move my lower half of my body, and I push back against it just to see if I can move it or kind of what the intention is here, and it's, it's clear that I can't. Uh, it's, it's too strong too strong um and there was a sense of panic for a moment but there also was a sense of like I don't know that it was trying to embrace me in a way it was it, it was a confusing energy um for me to understand in the moment and I've had other experiences where I know that I've been taken so it definitely um brought that up for me um I do think that some of this connection comes from uh, my family lineage um, and that I've been told that they do follow family lines. My grandmother told me stories and, and my family grew up on their reserve up in Northern California uh, where Yurok and um, she had mentioned that one night a UFO had actually landed on her home. She thought there was an earthquake because the house was shaking so bad. And she remembers a beam of light went through one of the windows and into my mother's room, and she was a baby at the time. And then the next day, the men in black showed up to the house and asked her questions around what had happened. And so I remember hearing those stories about the men in black when I was young, you know, before it was public information. And so this understanding of star ancestors has kind of always been there for me, um, and I've always just kind of known that they they were around and that they existed and I try not to be fearful sometimes we fear things that we don't understand but I also get that you know there's just different intentions as well depending on the paranormal so that's one of my stories mm. 
But oh, mm-hmm. I sure appreciate all you listeners bringing in those stories. That's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Imagine how terrifying that would be. Yeah. That light just coming through your house. Like, oh, God. <laughs> have you guys seen a VHS 2? I don't think I have. I think that's all the only one. The first one. They have a short film on that second one where I think it's just called Alien Abduction. Mm-hmm. And so they made an actual movie it, of it. And it's called like Kids versus Aliens. But the one on VHS 2 is basically they're out in the woods and it's his house and the parents are gone. So it's like some teenagers and like two little kids and their dog. And they're just kind of all at the house hanging out. And all of a sudden the lights go out and, and you know, like VHS, it's like from handheld, you know, the POV and yeah. the video camera type movie and, and the lights shut out and everybody's like, no, what's going on? You know? And they try to go out to the, uh, the, the bot, the electrical box and try to turn the, lights back on and nothing's working and all of a sudden they hear like this giant like vibration coming around them and then these horns start sounding off and this light shoots through their house and they don't know what it is and all these lights are just going around their house and they're just freaking out and and then it gets real quiet and all of a sudden these grays these gray aliens break in the house and they start taking them and they're like putting them in these like I don't know if they're sheets or if they're if they brought them from their ship. I don't know, like uh, these, but these bags and they're putting them. They're putting these kids in their bags and they're dragging them out and everybody's like screaming around and um, and that dog has a POV camera on it too, so it's running around and and you're looking at both views from the camera and the dog's uh, POV and and yeah, like they're trying to fight them off, but they can't. And there's probably like five seven aliens in there and they're just like abducting <laughs> these kids and then they finally you know they bring them out and they take them on the ship and it's near the lake is where that ship is and dang that poor dog man it's following them and that alien is trying to shoot it off and and i don't know it just kind of latches onto that sack and it's dragging them with them and and uh that part, that piece of that sack is like left on the outside of the ship and the ship goes up and then the dog just kind of falls oh, and then no. yeah, it falls down and it's like he's laying there and then you can see the ship going off and it takes those kids oh, and that's no on way. VHS too. That's like the best short film on that, on that, that sounds movie. sounds wicked. It's, it's pretty creepy, man. It's pretty yeah. scary, but I think that's like the best short film in that yeah. VHS 2 movie because the rest of them are kind of, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's gets a little <laughs> mundane for me. Now there it sounds like a movie that I saw um gosh, it's been several years ago. It's a movie from England called Attack the Block. Mm-hmm. Um it's with John Boega, the guy that played uh Finn in the Star Wars, the new Star Wars trilogy. Like oh, okay, okay. The, yeah. yeah. Um yeah. anyway, so it's sort of about like these aliens land in the ghetto (laughs) of like this England ghetto. Mm -hmm. And it's like all this, these gang members kind of like come together, but they're all kids. Um, I say kids, but like teenagers, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of like the aliens versus the gang members. Really? (laughs) It's pretty cool. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. They're all like, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like stranger things before stranger things came out. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it's a pretty cool movie. I like that one. It sounds a little bit like that, like kids versus aliens kind of thing. So yeah, I haven't watched the kids versus alien, but it's an actual like full, full on movie. Yeah. It's a full on movie and it's based on that VHS two short film see now i want to watch that but then i got to sit through the rest of vhs just to see that <laughs> <laughs> i don't i think i don't remember which like movie it is but that's the only movie i remember on that vhs too yeah i don't remember the any other movies that were on there i just remember that one that one like really caught my attention yeah because i mean as your kids you're like oh god like yeah this could actually happen that's <laughs> like, what i thought was gonna happen when i'm <laughs> sitting in the bed of that tr- pickup truck looking at the sky <laughs> Gonna put me in a sack. <laughs> Take me somewhere. I'm gonna have uh, uh, Russell read this one. How would you say that name? View profile. No, just kidding. <laughs> ah. Uh, he said he sent you one too. Oh, he pronounced okay. Alizader. Alaz. Alizader. Alizader. Right? 
Let's see. Alizader. My, my vowels might be. Uh, Alizader. Yeah, Alizader. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with that. Alizader. He, oh. he, he sent the. Oh, look through it? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm a, I'm What's a, this file? Yeah. What's this pig? <laughs> I think you can start from right here. But I think he's Pawnee too. All right. So this is from Alizader. Um, he said, I wouldn't say there's a lot of alien activity in Colorado, but there is activity, especially if you pay close attention. The most I've seen are UFOs, but of course, I'm not 100% sure if they are. I don't have a telescope or anything, just my eyes to see. But my story goes back to when I was really young, probably about five years old. I'm 24 now. I was staying at my grandparents. They live in town of Thornton, just about 20 minutes north of Denver. It was nighttime. I I had fallen asleep, but then something woke me up. I wasn't awake all the way. It was like sleep paralysis. Mm. Sleepwalking. I used to sleepwalk a lot as a child. Anyways, I could see my body from the outside and I walked downstairs and was just walking in circles around the house. I remembered a feeling that I never felt before. The best way to describe it was holding a giant magnet in one hand and a really small magnet in another and trying to connect them, but on the ends where they push each other away instead of together. I, <clears throat> I remember at one point my grandpa said something to me, and I went back to the room. I was sleeping, and upstairs, my grandpa always falls asleep on the couch downstairs. Now, this part, I'm not sure if I was awake or asleep, but I saw a figure appear seemingly out of nowhere. I don't really remember its face or what it was wearing, but it was hovering at the foot of the bed, and I was glowing and was glowing bright to this day i'm not sure what i experienced but i have i have had experiences with ghosts and supernatural stuff and this to me didn't feel like that it felt like i was being visited by something extraterrestrial and now as an adult i have watched countless videos about aliens and the different types of aliens that and the different types of aliens and the closest one that i have learned about that resembled what i saw was a Pleiadian, Pleiadian, alien or something like that. Those kind of aliens, real human-like and not like the greys. Thanks for letting me share my story. Noah Itty. So another sleep paralysis. Yeah. That's like three. Yeah. Why have I never heard that? Is that like a common thing? I just go off what I see on TV? Well, there's like people that try to debunk abductions. Oh, and okay. they say like... That goes back. They're trying to say the whole alien abduction thing is like, you know, you see the bright light mm-hmm. and you don't, you're not really sure if you're in sleep paralysis or not. But um, they say like, you're just remembering your time of birth is mm-hmm. what they're trying to say to mm-hmm. debunk like the whole alien abduction thing. Oh, but so. I mean, that was before like the government released information about now aliens are really here. Right. right? Like in. I don't want to say they know. I'm sure they know <laughs> a lot more than anybody else does. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, they probably have all kind of special abilities yeah. that we don't even, we can't even like imagine probably. Right. Like we're so in tune with what we have now. I mean, yeah. they're probably just so in tune with other elements and other things, you know, powdered milk. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is this stuff? <laughs> Studying it. I want to say my dough for that story. That was a good one. I got a, another story that I'm going to have Russell read from. What do you do with it? From Little Native. <clears throat> Little Native. I want to say this took place around 1995. I was eight years old and my cousins used to come out on weekends. So on weekends so it'll be about 11 of us just being what kids do outside playing in the woods all day long by evening we usually walk about a mile to our other cousin's house to play basketball we'll be there for most of the night until we hear the car horn from down the road which is our alarm to come back home so 
to come back home. So walking back home, us younger ones usually walk in the middle and older ones walked, walked on the outside. I'm assuming it was meant to be for safety. We got two creeks to cross down the road. For some odd reason, the second creek always felt weird, like something is there. Well, that night, as we were getting closer to that second creek, I've noticed the older cousins would walk faster in the moment we'd pass that creek. The best way that I can explain this sound, which it only sounded like the alien from E.T., it didn't chase us, but it screamed. Mm. We all ran and never walked back over there again. Dang. Mudo. I remember that scream. Well, let me tell you a story about that scream. I remember seeing when I was a kid, I saw E.T. in a movie theater. Mm-hmm. And when they shine that flashlight, they're throwing that ball. Mm-hmm. And he throws that ball back to him. And he throws that ball back. I was like, oh, my God, man. Shines a flashlight and those weeds. Like, yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Boy, I was underneath that seat, man. That scared the you know what out of me <laughs> as a kid. I mean, it did. It made me jump. And I thought, I mean, it did. It scared me. I remember that to this day, how scared I was. I remember that movie scared me. And another part that scared me was the very end of Close Encounters when they're waving to all those grays and that gray, like, does like that. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I would just creep me out, man. <laughs> I couldn't handle it. My little brain couldn't handle it. it scared me to death. I never watched Close Encounters. Oh, I, so good. I, I should have. So good. I was looking for milk, though. Yeah, no, I, was, <laughs> I was too busy looking for the movie Milk. The one movie that was crazy for me was, um, well, Fire in the Sky. Fire in the Sky is another obviously, one, man. That's an obvious one. But when I got older was um, Signs. Oh, yeah. And that, that one scene. Good too. That one scene when all those kids are at that party and Joaquin Phoenix is wa- watching the news. And those kids are like, it's right there. And then all of a sudden, man, it just pops up out of nowhere yeah. from that bush. <laughs> and it looks straight into the camera. I don't know why it freaked me out yeah. so bad. And I, Doesn't I, he, I, like, walk across the... Mm-hmm. He walks, like, like look. looking at the, the kids. Oh, uh, yeah. And he's just, like, kind of shifted. And he just walks past them. And I was like... In the theater, I was like, that scared the crap out of me. I was yeah. like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I watch it now on YouTube, and it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good movie, too. Do you have a good alien movies that you like mm, i don't i've never really watched a whole lot of alien movies the only ones i, I, I can remember you know is battlestar galactica no <laughs> uh, no i, I, I watch like aliens coming to earth I, I mean i've watched close encounters so, yeah and uh, i've watched dt of course yeah. and I think that's Mars Attack. See, oh, I love attacks. Mars Attack. That one's <laughs> fun. Yeah. And I think that's probably about all the alien ones I've ever watched. Yeah. You know one that, that, that doesn't get a whole lot of love, but I think it's freaking awesome, is the Spielberg War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise. Mm. I think that one is so yeah, good. I've seen that one. Man. I've seen that. I've, I've seen the original one. one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was pretty cool. But that so. one gets no love, I don't for whatever reason, I don't know, but man, that is a good movie, man. War of the Worlds. Probably I of like Tom Cruise. I think so. Like <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I like him. I like him too. Uh, he's never done nothing wrong to me, mm-hmm. but I don't know. He's kind of like Arnold. He's like one of those guys. It's he kind of gets a pass for me because he's given me so much. He's built up like all this goodwill of like all the all the entertainment that's just awesome that he's provided for me over the years. It's just like I. It's hard for me to just forget all of that you mm-hmm. know i don't know i love i think it's cool man it's a he's a he's all right dude by me yeah so. he's good but i like that one um independence day is great too oh I yeah, I've seen first, yeah. yeah i remember um watching that in a the theater too um i think i went back and saw that several times in mm-hmm. the theater um but yeah i've always been a fan of like you know the aliens coming to you know earth that one yeah. you mentioned um Oh, Twilight Zone one, where those aliens are trying to get the people on the ship. Oh yeah, to yeah, eat yeah. Them. I got the tattoo. Yeah. Whoa. Oh yeah, right there. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Twilight guy. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Team no, Jacob. But I, I watched it on YouTube because I was like, I want to watch that, and and it was crazy because they yeah. were yeah. 
like exactly how you said like i figured it out yeah I mean, right i know what they want to do yeah <laughs> there's another really good one too called the invaders and i got that tattoo too um it's but it's all there's not a word spoken in the whole thing but it's like this old farmhouse and this um uh ufo crashes on top of this lady's house this older lady and she's there by herself and these little aliens that are probably like i mean they're little you know what i mean they're probably like 12 inches tall mm-hmm. and they kind of like attack her and she's like trying to defend her home. And then like the big reveal at the end is like, um, that they, the camera pans up to the, to the cross the UFO and it says United States air force on it. So it's like, you think that the, the invaders are bad guys, but they are talking about like, Oh, we landed on this planet of giants. And so it's Whoa. like it was actually the lady that was the bad the bad guy. Really? Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, mm. I got that tattoo. It's oh, pretty cool. Hold on, I got this tattoo. That's what the aliens look like. <laughs> yeah, I got that tattoo of the, of the invaders. Put Whoa. your leg up on the. <laughs> <laughs> Go like that. Yeah, man, Go I'm on. a big fan of Twilight Zone. <laughs> I mean, I got all my tattoos down here are Twilight Zone tattoos. But yeah, that's another good one. So check it out. I'm gonna check that one out. Yeah, it's that cool. One sounds awesome. It's cool too, because like I said, there's not one word that's spoken in the whole thing till like the very end. I guess I shouldn't have spoiled it, because then you'd be like, oh, like what? You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of like a. I'll still watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a story from a, an elder. Uh, he's Osage and Oto and Pawnee, I believe. And. Uh, Anyway, he wanted to kind of be anonymous, too. You know, uh, he said um, he's traveled down the Highway 20 between uh, Hominy and Skytook. You know, there's a Highway 20 that goes by the lake. And um, anyway, he said, you know, he was traveling from uh, Fairfax to uh, Skytook, you know, to go to Sharps and uh, get some supplies and whatnot and you know this was kind of this was uh during uh i guess winter time because it got dark early he said and he went to sky to got his stuff and was heading back you know uh, to you know fairfax and he was on highway 20 and uh, he said there was a light up in the air and at first, you know, he was he was riding. I guess his wife was driving. And uh, he saw that light. And it kind of like it, it stayed with him. You know, and it wasn't the moon and it wasn't the stars. It was too low. And um, he said, but it was weird looking because it, it would go forward. Then it would come back backwards forward and then backwards and finally he said he saw it it went straight and then up straight up and then disappeared into the clouds Mm. and you know he watched this thing you know going down that road and he thought wow that's interesting you know and, you know, he didn't really think anything of it. He said, well, maybe it was a helicopter or something, you know. And he thought about it, thought about it. And he said the way it was moving, he said, I don't think helicopters can, you know, travel like that. So anyway, time's gone by, you know, he wasn't really thinking about it, you know. And uh, he had to go into Tulsa for something. And again, he was traveling down Highway 20. This time he was by himself. And he said it was in in nighttime, you know, it was dark. And uh, he said, again, he was on that kind of that same patch on Highway 20. And he said he saw this light come out from the clouds. And it just kind of made kind of a, a swoop. But then it just stopped. And he was watching it because he was you know, going forward and it was ahead of him. But it was just kind of like stayed right in front of the road. And he said, in a blink of an eye, it moved that quick. It just swooped back up. 
and disappeared in the clouds. And, you know, he thought, you know, this time he had kind of a little bit better look at it. And he said, that wasn't no helicopter. And you know, that wasn't no plane. And uh, he believes that was, you know, someone, you know, uh, uh, one of those UFOs. But then he was talking to somebody at one of their dances. And they explained the same thing on Highway 20. So I don't know if that's a UFO or what, but, you know, more than one person has seen that in that area. Mm. And so I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Is that recent? Mm-hmm. He told me that probably, well, of course, just uh, that's what he told me, but he didn't put no time, time frame. Out. The only thing he said was that first time it was like winter time. Yeah. You know, so anyway, uh, I didn't. I I assumed it was, you know, sometime recently, you know, within the past three or four years, because he said, you know, when he's talking to people at dance, true, true, yeah, yeah, you know, um, they explain the same thing in kind of the same area. So, yeah, I don't know. I was just wondering if there's anybody out there listening that's also had a similar experience. Yeah, you know, yeah, on that Highway 20, have you guys had that experience between uh, Hominy and Skytick? Let us know. Yeah, not oh, just go there. Scoot in. Right now. No. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got another story, uh, and this is from another listener that wants to be anonymous. Now, I'm going to let the listeners know this is kind of a, I don't know, disturbing story, I guess you can, might say. So, again, just give you uh, words of warning on this part. Trigger warning. Yeah, so anyway, this story goes, you know, this uh, lady, she was, uh, I think she said she was around her, her, the age of 30, you know, she was kind of, uh, she was transferred to a different area for work, and uh, I think this she was uh, transferred somewhere she said somewhere in Arizona, and I cannot remember what place, but uh, for for her safety, I wouldn't say it anyway, I guess. So, uh, anyway, uh, she was housed there in Arizona. She was working, and she said the community that she was living in, uh, or the community she was working in, was far from where she was staying. So, she had about an hour and a half commute, you know, to get to work and to get back home. And, you know, she was traveling, you know, back and forth. And she didn't really have time to date anybody or, you know, meet anybody or anything like that. Anyway, the story goes, you know, she said uh, she was down there for about a year or two. But she was always having this dream, this dream of these. She, she said it was like aliens coming into her room at night. And, you know, a lot of times, you know they would tie her down and, you know, examine her. And and she started waking up, you know, in the morning times. And, you know, there was things that just wasn't right with her body. You know, again, you know, I guess, you know, she knew what was going on, you know. And and time goes by, you know, and, and she started getting kind of sick. And so she went to the doctor to come and find out she was pregnant. And she was sitting there thinking, wow, you know, how could that be? You know, I'm I'm working, you know, 12-hour shifts, and I'm finishing up a a school degree. You know, I, I really don't have time to. And, you know, she didn't recall, you know, having any relations you know, but all this time she was having these dreams, and this was like going on for a long period of time. Come to find out, you know, she was pregnant, and she said, "Well, I don't know, maybe, you know, I don't know, you know, it's crazy. Maybe they got it wrong or what." So she went to a different doctor. The doctor said, "Yeah, you're pregnant. You know, you're 
so so much along you know i think she said uh one trimester i guess that's what three months or something i don't know <clears throat> anyway so anyway uh she goes okay she goes uh she was thinking about, you know, telling her folks, you know, and trying to explain to them, you know, what has happened. And, you know, you know, she said, this is just weird, you know, and <clears throat> she's starting to have these uh, violent dreams of these things coming in and doing tests, kind of like tests on her, you know, because she said they would tie her down and and they would like put uh things on her you know and the only thing she could think of was they were testing her for something mm. and then uh in one of her supposedly dreams she dreamed that uh she uh these things kind of forced her down and they took something out of her you mm. know they went inside her and took something out of her and the next morning when she came to you know there was blood all over her sheets mm. and so she got worried and of course got up went to the doctor and come find out you know that baby was gone mm. and the doctors couldn't explain what has happened they thought they thought she had maybe a miscarriage and maybe you know she got rid of it or you know they kept asking her questions they did a um what do you call it investigation mm -hmm. trying to find out you know what took place on this but you know in her mind you know it was these things that would come in at night you know she thought it was those things and so, anyway, that was her story. I might have left some stuff out. I apologize for that. I'm pretty tired. But, you know, again, that's pretty much the gist of, of that story. But, you know, she said she had, doc, you know, doctor, uh, what do you call it, doctor files and stuff like that to prove that she was pregnant. And then she it has wasn't. wasn't. Whoa. That's crazy. I've heard of that. Wasn't that on Unsolved Mysteries too? I know they had a bunch of alien stuff. Yeah, but I know they were like. Oh, I don't remember that one. Well, I know like there's stories too of um just if you get abducted, like they like I said they take like sicknesses away they could right like yeah. that's possible too. But also they're putting like stuff inside of your blood and pretty much experimenting i guess is what you know i've heard i've heard people talk about just on random videos and articles too like reddit has a lot of crazy stuff about alien stuff and there's people that talk about like um they don't know how they got pregnant as well and i've heard that too where it's just like completely gone but they think they're like still in a dream state or maybe it's all made up or something they don't know what's real and what's not real Whoa. And they start questioning like their own like life, I guess, because it's I don't know. There's no way to really explain it, I guess. Yeah. And so, but I've heard stuff like that too. But I don't know. That's crazy. I don't know. I do remember one episode. I think they thought they interviewed this guy who claimed to be like abducted like several times, mm -hmm. and they were like leaving things like in his body, and mm -hmm. he was like going to like this x-ray machine or whatever and they were finding like little bits of like metal like in his skin and they were like and they filmed this one where they took it out and it was like a little sliver of like this shiny metal and it was just just right underneath his skin and they went and had it all tested and it didn't test came back like inconclusive because it was like it was it was made from materials that like we didn't know what it was mm -hmm. like it was and they're like he's like watch I'll, they'll leave another one and then like sure enough like i don't remember but he kept like waking up and having like these little steel like a little steel ball like a little uh ball bearing or something like left inside of him um yeah and they were like kept taking him out 
Dang. You know, like he show one, he could like roll it around on his skin, and you could see it, you know, underneath the skin. Mm-hmm. And he was like rolling it back and forth. He's just like, yeah, I wake up with these things inside me all the time, mm-hmm. and they couldn't explain it, like where it was coming from or what they were even made out of, because it was just like they're not made from any materials that we know, you know, that are on Earth. So it was crazy. I think I vaguely remember that. Yeah, and that's. That show creeped me out all the time, too. <laughs> I mean, they would talk about abductions and experiments like that where things are left in, in your body. And there was no explanation of, like, what it was. Yeah. And just, the yeah, testing was. Yeah. They couldn't figure out, like, what that material is or anything. Or how it even got there. Or how it got like there because there was no Underneath the skin, yeah, there was no cut or mm-hmm. incision or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was, like, like I said, he was, like, rolling around. Like, look, there it is. Like, I woke up with this in my knee. You Golly. Know what I mean? It's crazy. See, man, getting scared. <laughs> Unsolved mysteries and fire in the sky. <laughs> that was like an in-depth look of, like, what really happened. <laughs> man, when they put that goo in his mouth. Whew. Dude. And then, well, when that I want to watch that now, man. What was that, like, a syringe thing that went in his eye? In his eye, Dude, yeah. That scared. I want to watch that now. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're too busy watching powder no milk you're too busy watching milk <laughs> we're gonna watch powdered milk next <laughs> we don't have an mc it's yeah, gonna be the new hashtag hashtag milk <laughs> i've got one more story <laughs> and uh here comes up the beaded mic <laughs> we're in chris's medallion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got you fam <laughs> Got you, tribe. Powder milk is here. (laughs) (laughs) Dang it. Shades go on. Undertaker hat. (laughs) (laughs) This is a a story that comes from Gallup, New Mexico. And uh, again, this one wants to be anonymous. You know, he's a... well, he's a judge in that area, and uh, I'll just say that much. And uh, anyway, he was saying when he, he him and his cousins were uh, young guys, um, they used to work at the uh, some kind of airport that was near there, and they were, all their their job was to go in there and, and uh, change the lights out for the runway, you know. So they had access to those lights those big lights and he said they had to replace some of them you know and they were going to throw them away you know some of these older ones so they took one home and of course you know they was you know buzzed up you know having a good time you know they were just trying to kill some time you know so they took those uh those uh powerful lights from the airport and they started playing with them you know shooting them up in the sky you know turning them on and off and you know uh trying to see if they could contact anybody you know by doing that you know and <clears throat> they kept turning them on turn them off you know and they'd leave them on you know point straight up you know and they would try to do um sos on there you know and uh Anyway, they said they did this, you know, several nights, you know, just, you know, fool around and stuff. And pretty soon, uh, uh, I guess they all live kind of close to each other, you know, I guess, you know, my understanding. And he said uh, they started having weird dreams of things coming into their room, you know, and looking at them. And they didn't really say anything to each other. You know, they was just, you know, having this. And then, <clears throat> and uh, they said this was actually starting to happen, you know, more frequently. He knew w- with him, it was almost like every other night, you know, it was that frequent. Then it started to be almost every night. And... Each night, it got worse and worse, and what he meant by that was not only were they, uh, I guess they started out kind of looking at him through the window, and then it got to the point where they were actually in his room, Mm. and then 
he said on last couple occasions that they would pick him up and they would take him outside and it was like they were trying to take off with him and he would fight with them and then pretty soon they would leave but you know he would he he said this wasn't no dream he knew it wasn't no dream because you know when they dr- drug him out they they drug him out when he was asleep but you know he'd wake up you know, and he'd fight fight with them, and he kind of described them as kind of a uh, uh, thin but tall, but had big black eyes, and he said they were strong, uh, but you know, for some reason, you know, the way they were built, he was able to outmaneuver them, and he was able to get free, and he would get back in his room, and he would lock the door. And uh, they would just stand out there, and then pretty soon they would leave. And he started talking to his cousins, the ones that, you know, they they were all playing with those lights. And they all had the same, basically the same thing that happened to them. And so these guys went to their elders, you know, and, and their elders told them, you know, we believe in that kind of stuff, you know. We, you know, those Dene people have their own stories of of things, and um, he said, you know, to stop. First of all, stop, you know, doing that. You know, just cut it off. And he said, you know, you guys need to leave for a little bit and be gone for at least, you know couple weeks and then come back those things will leave you alone that's what that elder told them Mm -hmm. and they did and from this day on they believe in those stories Mm -hmm. so don't play with those lights (laughs) dude these dreams are terrifying (laughs) i know i don't know if i want to go to sleep tonight i want to put on some kind of Dang, I was, SpongeBob or something when I get home. When, when he was think happy thoughts. When when he was telling me that, you know, as a kid, I think everybody's done that. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so I don't know. Yeah, I remember my my cousin telling me like, man, take this flashlight. If you shine it on the moon in a hundred years, you'll hit the hit the. <laughs> It's going to take a hundred years for that light to hit the moon. <laughs> That's what he always told me. I was just like, man, I'll just shine out there as long as I could. As long as I could, hundred years, and it hit the moon. That beam of light. <laughs> you know those uh, green lasers? Yeah. Those powerful green lasers. So there's a video. If I could find it, I'll post it. But there's a. I don't know. It's just this guy at his house, and he's with his friends. And I mean, I've done the same thing too, where I've shined that light out in the sky, and mm-hmm. I mean, it goes way out there. And anyways, there's this thing like this little light just flying across. And he's like, what is that? What? And they're all like, what is that? And they're like, dude, shine that light on it. And, oh, yeah. And he does, and he shines that green light on it. And it kind of stops, and it kind of keeps going. Like, it, it slows down, obviously, but he's, like, shining that light on it like that. And he's hitting it, like, right on like right on the whatever it is. And and then he stops shining it, and then it shines back at him. Like, it's an, it's an exact same green light shining back at him. And they're all screaming and freaking out. <laughs> they're like, oh, my God. And, and it just continues flying off, like shining back at them. And I was like, oh, That's, man. Oh, my God. No way. <laughs> that yeah. was a recent video, too. Like, Gee, I remember you telling me that yeah, one. Yeah. I'll have, to send it, I'll have to post it on here if I could find it. I can't find these videos anymore. You're making them up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did make that up. No, I'm just nah. kidding. No, nah, you've told me that one. I do want to see that one because that one sounds awesome. I'm trying to find it. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is, you know, I know a lot of Muskogee men probably couldn't get lifted up at that beam. It'd take more than <laughs> <laughs> it'd take more than six grays to lift lift some of these Muskogee men I know out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> Ten ships. We got some big, got two beams like this and a little little extra beam come up. Need some backup. We're down here on the res. Get this little boy. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Calling him out. Dang. 
<laughs> I didn't mention no, no. names. <laughs> Have you guys seen any like aliens in real life? I mean, ships or whatever. Not my, not me, but I know my mom and my grandma told a story. Um, told us a story when we were growing up about coming back from Tahlequah. Uh, my mom was going to school down there when I was a kid. And um, I don't know what they were going down there for, but my grandma and my mom were coming back. Um, and it was late at night, and they were driving down, I don't know, this old road, I guess. She said probably around near Holbert or just right outside of Holbert. And um, that this light, like, hit the top of their car. And, of course, they were driving, and she was, like, trying to, like, look and, you know, stay on the road at the same time. And um, then it went off, and they were like, what? What is that? And then, like, as soon as that, they said that, like, it came back on, and it followed them. Like, this light, like, followed them. And then um, she's like, she started driving faster. It's like, well, we can try to outrun it. And so that she was like, you know, gun in it, you know? And she said, um, before too long, man, this thing just shot down like the hood of the car and just took off like this big, just ball of like red, just red light, just shot down the hood of the car, almost like right in front of him. And then just took off down that road. And then same thing just went straight up <laughs> into the sky. Whoa. Yeah. So I, I have not had any kind of encounter, but my mom tells that story. She's like, ah, to this day, like, I don't know what it was. She's like, I swear we had an alien following us home yeah. one night. That's what she says. Yeah, I used to see him in New Mexico a lot in the daytime because the sun would be shining. So you could, well, these little silver like balls in the sky, it'd be reflecting the sun off of it. And I remember one time, dang, he- traffic was all heavy, and I was I had my friend in the car. And I just happened to look up and I saw this like little ball and like the light was shining on it. But you could see it like clearly because the skies are clear and everything. And I mean, it was right there. And I looked at it and I was like, whoa, I was like, check that out. And he checked it out and he said, uh, he's like, you think that's an alien? I was like, man, probably. I was like, I don't think that's a plane or anything because it, it was just hovering there in that one spot. It wasn't moving. It wasn't traveling. It wasn't doing nothing. It was just like right there. And I swear I could see it like vaguely spinning mm. in that one spot. And then I don't know. Every time like I see him, every time I would see him, they would just kind of go go off in the sky, like disappear way out. And it was I. I told him I was like, dang, it probably it probably <laughs> saw us looking at him. So yeah. it, it probably just went off. Like oh, they seen us. They saw us. Yeah, <laughs> we out. <laughs> But I've seen like several of those in New Mexico, and every time that was the same like thing. It was uh, I'd see them, and then they would just kind of float off into whatever, mm-hmm. and then you wouldn't be able to see them again. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. Never had dreams about them, because that was years into New Mexico, and so I would just see them in the daytime. I never saw them at night or anything. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any dreams I've had of aliens. I don't know. I haven't had any dreams of aliens, but again, I don't know what I saw, but you know, there's been several times I've stared at the sky, you know, different places and I've seen weird lights, Mm -hmm. you know, and that I knew they weren't stars, but you know, again, they could have been a satellite. They could have been, you know, tons of different things, but you know, they just didn't move right. But you know, again, I don't have any. I don't have anything that would say whether it was, you know, what it was. You know, I've seen that, you know, a couple of times. But, you know, <clears throat> I think this was like early 2000s. And I won't say what grounds it was, but I'll just say it was a grounds near Henrietta, Oklahoma. They were having their ceremonial dance. You know, uh, stomp dance, you know, and everybody there saw this light come down and it kind of circled and it just did some odd things. Then it left and a lot of those uh, uh, creeks that were at that dance, you know, of course, they thought that was uh, a bad omen, mm-hmm. you know, and so, you know, a lot of them 
did some, you know, things to, I don't know what you call it, as precaution, you know, in case that was a negative message of some sort. But I remember, you know, that was big talk all through uh, Creek Country, but that same night, people in the town of Henrietta, Oklahoma, you know, were saying that they seen those lights. You know, they were going above above the city or town. Henrietta's not very big. You know, it's very, well, I don't know, it might be bigger now, but back then it was, wasn't that big of a place. And they said, you know, everybody saw it. So, mm. I don't know. Whoa. That, I mean, being at the grounds and seeing something like that in the middle of a dance, that freaked me out, too. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> That makes me uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, Tyler? Would you continue? I don't know what I would do. I mean, it kind of got me there. I don't know what I, I mean. I would probably stay put. Yeah. I'd stay put. I don't think I'd leave, no. But I'd want to. I think everything inside me would want to say, like, get in your car and go home. But You know, if you separate. You that's what know. I'm saying. I'm staying inside that ring, man. <laughs> I ain't leaving that ring until they tell me to leave that ring. <laughs> I will die in that ring. <laughs> <laughs> Just brush me out of the way, dance over me. <laughs> Just cover me up with dirt. <laughs> dance around me. If any of you Muskogee people were there at that dance, let us know. I'd like to hear your story or your your thoughts on that. Okay, so this is kind of on topic. There's a really awesome show, man, called Manifest. Have you seen that? It's on Netflix. Y'all need to watch that. I'm telling you, it's really good. So it came out, I guess, probably about five years or so ago, and then they did like three seasons, and then it's just one of those shows that just never caught on or for whatever reason, and they canceled it. But then it kind of found an audience like on Netflix because they put out the first season. And then it is good. And, like, everybody was, like, kind of irritated because, like, oh, there's like three seasons of this? Mm-hmm. So they put out a fourth one. But basically the whole story of the premises is um, there's a flight that's leaving and flies into a storm and then it disappears. And then it shows back up, like, ten years later. It just lands like nothing happened. And then the people get off and they haven't aged or anything. So... Um, and they don't have any memory. They, they don't even know that anything happened. And But then they all kind of come back with, like, these different visions. Like, they'll be going to sleep and they'll, like, have, like, a vision or they'll see something. And, like, one lady's, like, a cop. And so it kind of helps her, like, um, solve these crimes. And, like, how did you know, like, this was going to happen? She's just like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? And, like, this one, like, I don't know. It is a really good show, though. Y'all need to check it out. It's called Manifest. It is good. And there's four, there's three seasons, like old seasons, and they just redid a fourth one just because everybody was kind of irritated. It's one of those shows that kind of left on the cliffhanger, and then it just got canceled. You know, like Alf, mm-hmm. Project Alf, when Alf got captured. Remember Alf? Alf, the, <laughs> Alf, the puppet. Yeah, he was an alien. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, so like the he, very last episode, <laughs> Alf, he gets he gets captured at the end by the government, and then they just ended the show. You never find out what happened to him. So then they had to come back and make the movie of Alf to tell you what happened to Alf. So it's kind of the same thing. So they left it on a cliffhanger, and then they came back to finish it. What what happened to Alf? Yeah, what they did to him. <laughs> I've never watched a movie. It's called Project. I don't. Come Project on. Alf. I've never. <laughs> you know, they honestly. Took, took him to Area 51. <laughs> chopped him up. Well, <laughs> he's in taco meat now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't really know because I don't think I ever saw the the movie. It's called Project Alpha. What? I never saw it. <laughs> I saw the the series, but I don't think I ever saw the movie. Is that a real movie? You just yeah, make that up? no, it's real. It's called Project Alpha. I'm gonna look he, it up. He's right probably now. Indian taco meat now. <laughs> he's probably topped on <laughs> a fry bread. Well, first of all, I got to get all clear off my internet movie database because it's full of milk movies. <laughs> And let me see. It's gonna <laughs> give me a all those milk movies, dude. I was like looking through because it shows you like what you looked at. It's all like milk, milk, milk. And there's like a bunch of short films called Milk. And I was like reading the, the thing, 
for all of them. Like the here it is. Project Alf came out. TV movie, nineteen ninety six. Captured by the alien task force, Alf was rescued by two officers who found out that the project shall be canceled. Ooh. Ooh. Six years ago, the space alien Alf was on his way back to his new home when the alien task force finally caught him. Now the story continues where the series ended. Alf is now protected by the alien task force, but the leader wants to terminate him. So two officers decide to save Alf by taking Alf away from him. But the man the officers took Alf to wants to finally reveal Alf to the world. That is a lot of Alf in one <laughs> one paragraph, which leads them to more danger. So Project Alf. It's a real thing. I want to watch it. <laughs> That'll be our next episode. <laughs> next hashtag, hashtag Project Alf. Project Alf. Hashtag milk. Getting late, y'all. <laughs> Egg milk, <laughs> powdered milk. So get it straight, guys. <laughs> Man, you should watch this movie called Milk and tell our listeners about it. I think they'd really like that. Oh, I'm on it, Chris. Milk, <laughs> milk. What's he talking about? Tyler spent a week searching for milk. Dude, I lit the miracle honest, movie. Full disclosure, man, at least forty five minutes. I was like, I don't think there is a movie called Milk <laughs> with aliens. Like, I don't think there is. I read the descriptions, and then I got down into like the movies with milk in the title, like Milk Money and like Milk Maids. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> like for real. <laughs> And then he comes over and he hits me with, oh, it's a kid that got struck by lightning. You didn't even tell me that. He just said, that, oh, you can check out this movie called Milk. Not aliens. You'll like it. <laughs> Do your homework. That's what he tells me. Do your homework. <laughs> oh, yes, sir, Chris. <laughs> I'm on it. Brought that essay. <laughs> about Milk. Milk the movie. <laughs> Bunch of movies about dairy farmers. <laughs> Dang. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 45 minutes, man. I went down this rabbit hole. Oh, man. And then I said, you know what? I'm just going to watch this movie about Mothman. <laughs> <laughs> I give up, man. I don't think there is a movie called Milk. And then we didn't even get to talk about Mothman. <laughs> I guess that's my. Well, I guess watch Powder and then. <laughs> Dude, I gonna never that. watch that movie again the same. All I'm gonna be thinking about is that head man. <laughs> <laughs> Performing miracles. He knows every song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the AIM song, I got you. Any song we can <laughs> sing. Was all the trick songs. All the 49 songs. <laughs> He's out the 49 just banging them out. <laughs> that pizza song. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Oh, all right. Well, I guess we'll cut it here. <laughs> Everybody go watch Powdered Milk and Project Owl. Project Owl. <laughs> I think we covered it all, didn't we, man? I mean, yeah, I think so. I don't think we left no stone unturned on this one for digging out Alf. <laughs> <laughs> but let everybody know where to follow you, where you're going to be at, all that good stuff. Well, you can find me at Christopher Honka Hill at uh, Instagram and TikTok. I'll be at uh, Porum on... Uh, July 29th, and uh, you guys got, got no place to go. Come on out. We got some uh, special guests coming out. And uh, again, if you want to hear some truly spooky stories, you won't want to miss this one. Yeah, uh, you can catch me over at Skoden. Oh, Tyler Randall, sorry. Uh, you can catch me over at Skoden underscore cinema. I also do a pump action podcast, so you can catch me there. Um, I'm also going to be in porn. I understand that there's a couple of listeners that are a little heated that I was a no-show 
down at the run, but uh, I was telling Chris that I was down there. I didn't see any of y'all. I was down there at the finish line, yeah. smoking cigarettes, <laughs> drinking hot coffee. I don't know where the rest of y'all were. Eating that bologna. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Had a bologna sandwich. That's right. With a slit. <laughs> Keep that bubble down. <laughs> nah, but uh, for real, I I, I apologize. Um, we had a, a a bad storm here, and we had a tree fall on our house, and so I had spent that week um, cutting up that tree, and uh, out in the heat, and we had no AC, no electricity. It's hard times, um, like what Chris was saying. Uh, people want to go back to those old ways, and I'm okay with AC. I don't think I can make it back in the old days. Man, we was we was sweating. So I apologize for for missing that, but I just had some some business to take care of. But you know, I'll catch y'all somewhere on a run somewhere. But just getting jacked using that saw. That was. It was like Rambo. My back was just like glistening. <laughs> Somebody said Mothman back there, man. Look at that back. Yeah. All them feathers. Man. That Thunderbird back there. Yes, cutting sir. that tree up. Cut that tree. There's old T Bird. <laughs> Perched. That saw. Man. Up in that tree. Man, that was hard work. I ain't lying. I man. bet. And all I had was a little saw. That little handheld saw. Yeah, a little bow saw and pair of loppers that's all i got man Dang. yeah just scissors <laughs> <laughs> nail clippers <laughs> yeah. it's that kitchen knife <laughs> yeah well, i did it was kind of funny man and, and god bless him you know this this kid came over from across the street and he's like let me help you man and this little this kid man he's probably about man, 15 probably and i was like sure man and i was like you know go go for it because he ain't gonna hurt anything but all he had was like a little hacksaw that was you know it was crookeder than the freaking dog's back leg he's just trying to saw these limbs that dude was there about 15 minutes he's like i'll be right back i'm gonna get a better saw guess what ghost he never came back (laughs) ghosted me ghosted me i was like (laughs) just hit for me all day yeah he did i just see the blinds like bend down and then pop back oh he's still out there (laughs) in the heat I'll be right back. Dude, I'm like, <laughs> just drained, man. No fluids in my body. I look like a piece of beef jerky up there, just like <laughs> trying to saw that all out, man. I'm just dry, <laughs> dried out. That Slim Jim with arms. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? That, <laughs> that Jack's link up there in the tree. <laughs> What's that haunt link doing? Yeah. It's up there with arms. Yeah. <laughs> That bow saw. <clears throat> yeah, man, but that's, yeah, that's hard work, man. That's where I was at, so sorry, y'all. I missed you, but like Next I said, time. Next time, for sure. Next time. Next 5K, let Tyler know which one to go to. Yeah, I so. got a year to, to train for the, uh, nope. no? Whatever, whatever's <laughs> next, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> let him know, listeners, let him know. <laughs> oh, man, no. I'm, I'm going to be turning off my Instagram messages. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> gonna block everyone yeah where'd this page go <laughs> <laughs> i ghost you like that 16 year old kid with a hacksaw be right back guys <laughs> yeah i'll be right back be right back listeners <laughs> i'll just pop in oh nope <laughs> leave you on open <laughs> whatever i go follow them check them out check us out at porum oklahoma um we'll be telling some scary stories go follow me at okie podcast at Russmus forty nine, my personal on Facebook is Russell Sun Eagle. Check us out on Instagram, Spirit Talkers, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever, <clears throat> TikTok, Spirit Talkers as well. So it's an easier name to get out there because <laughs> I remember I had to, I had to change every like everything on each social because everything was taken so i had to rearrange the words and i had to remember everything that was. reservations unsolved of the yeah. mysteries <laughs> it's all backwards yeah. but spirit talkers fought, google us whatever and we'll, we should show up spirit talkers podcast so mm. till next time everybody stay spooky drink your powdered milk yep drink that powdered milk and watch uh, project <laughs> alpha <laughs>